All right, Let Us Heads, we are back for another episode of Let Us Rank. This time we are taking on our top three rules changes we would make to the game of golf. We're going to jump right into it. We're going to randomize it. Adam, kick us off. All right, so I'm going to be very specific with this. Not just OB, <laughs> residential OB, okay? Yeah. You know, our home course that we play, it's got a lot of residential OB. You know, I'm not I'm not the straightest driver, so I tend to find the residential OB a lot more than others. But to be honest with you, I I think you should just be able to play out of people's yards. Like, why not? Like, they're you know, it should just you know be part of the you know HOA where like, hey, this is kind of common knowledge, guys, that you know golf balls are going to be in your yard. People are going to be playing out of it. You know, you can either buy the home or you can. I mean, I'm. Yeah, I don't see a problem. So, with it. so we're probably going to end up having some overlap in these. So I'm going to jump in. I actually had as my first one. I was going to say stroke and distance relative to uh, OB. I was going to do a little shout out as well. Residential OB, especially 80s, 90s golf construction, That's an abomination. Um, the golf courses suck. Let's fit as many houses as close to the course as possible. Uh, I, I guess my thing is the history of OB in the game. I get it. It did play. It has played a critical role in certain historic courses. I'm just out on stroke and distance at this point. Um, you know, I guess it depends on where you net out on how hard the game is or isn't, but in terms of speed and pace and enjoyment, uh, I don't understand why there's a special rule. Why is it just not play it as a penalty area? I'm not necessarily jumping to playing it out of the backyards yet. I mean, hey, that would be sick. Like you own the property, like the golf course, they're gonna hit. Um, they can hit, but uh, just short of that, if we can't get quite get to the playing out of the yards, I just don't like just take a drop. Um, and not why? Why is it a two-stroke penalty? Seems extremely arbitrary. Right, it just no, confuses the rule. It just confuses the rule for no reason. Golf I'm, comp I'm willing enough. to reach across the aisle and say, you know what? <laughs> I I agree. Let's play everything as a red stake, okay? You know, pace of play. It makes too much sense. It's the easiest rule to change. Yeah. What yeah. you think, Aaron? Why are there any penalties? The penalty <laughs> is that you hit a bad shot. So hear me out. If you hit it in the water, why am I walking up somewhere? And now I'm dropping the ball, and that counts as a stroke. Now, how about I hit one in the water? My penalty is I have to hit one again, just drop it and hit again. That's that's no penalties. The penalty is the ball is gone. So same thing. You hit in the house. Okay, one's over there. Now I get to hit my second shot. Now if it becomes I'm hitting 10 in a row because I suck and can't get out of this moment, then you just need to move on with the hole. So wait, are you advocating that we eliminate the idea of a penalty stroke? And it's just, if you just 100%. hit it into a bad spot or an unplayable spot and you throw another ball down to hit it, that's just a stroke. You don't throw it. You literally have to hit the shot over again. So on a par three, I hit it in the water. Oh, That's one. Now my second shot is I'm on the tee again. And, and if I make that shot, I make a birdie from the tee box. Why are, there, why are we penalizing people for bad shots that already fucked them? So you're literally in distance. Well, the, but go, it's like, I have to like, the, I have to take it out of the water and that's another stroke. And, okay, and then I'm hitting like, why it's so one, the one it's shots. That so was a shot. Hit, now I'm on my hit, second shot. You hit one in the water or out of bounds. And then you yeah, just forget. So there's it. no distinction. It's gone. You hit one. It's either in play or it's not. It's gone. It's in the middle of a cactus that'll, you know, it's. I do think it makes more sense on the tee box, like replay your shot and you're hitting two from the tee box. The penalty yeah. is that you lost your ball. Why do I get penalized? It's like these double penalties for kind of golf would be so much more fun if they just got rid of it. Scores would be lower, but everyone's mm -hmm. would be. Yeah, that is. It's I under way I, more chill. When you first said it, I was really out on this concept, but now I get what you mean. It kind of brings like executing the golf shot back into the equation of like, oh, you didn't like yeah. that shot over water or you get to hit it again and he can hit it there's again. There's no bailout. Yeah, there's no bailout, but also you don't have an arbitrary extra penalty stroke is what you're saying. Correct. No arbitrary extra penalty strokes. So just yeah. to clarify, if you're on a, if you're on a par five, 
middle of the mm-hmm. fairway and you wipe one way right, it goes OB. You just put down a ball exactly where you just hit from, and it's not an an additional stroke. You're just you're, you're playing just the next stroke. Yeah, it okay. would. Yeah, actually, not yeah. I mean, how have I not thought about this? That's actually. I mean, I'm all about executing golf shots. That's why I hated the scramble, um, the four main mm-hmm. scramble where you get the the string and the the, the mulligan. Like it's not like you. It's at least bad. that forces you to just hit the shot. Okay. okay. Lots on that. Really emotional topic. So that hit uh, Adam and I's number one. So or our number three, I guess. But uh, over to you, Mister uh, Golfberg. No, that was part of one of mine as well, which is oh, why okay. So, I so our, it. but I'll go. I'll go no, on well, to another number, one. Well, okay. So let's yeah, let's do. It. Let's go to another one. So our round let's one go is done. One. We're going to round two. The most ridiculous rule in golf, um, but well, at, at private golf at least, no backwards hats. What are we talking about? What are we talking about this day and age? Um, I was yelled at a month ago. I yelled at. I actually had a car guy come up to me. He's like, hey, man, can you please turn your hat around? And I'm like, he goes, I'm, I feel like such an idiot for having to do this. They make me do it. It's like everyone knows it's ridiculous. Like, what are we um, talking about? Um, anyway, that's it. No, yeah, I don't. Um, yeah, that's a pretentious one. Um, I don't really understand. Like, it's a hat, however you want to wear it. Who Who cares? Um, what are they worried about? What does it represent when your hat's backwards that they're so bone thugs? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Adam, mm. th- thoughts on uh, ball caps? I'm not too worried about the hats, but I do think, you know, we can't have people coming out there in, in jean shorts and t shirts and whatnot. I'm, I'm oh, not. Oh, a slippery slope I'm, argument? Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 maybe. But untucked, untucked shirts looks good with giant. Never mind. Butterflies. Just, just, we just need a college shirt, and I guess that's the thing. Like it is subjective because, like, I can wear some Viore shorts and like an athletic shirt and look cool on the putting green. But then, like, some old <laughs> chud comes out there, and he looks like a piece of shit. There's like dad sandals on, and you're like, ah. You're not making this cool places. looking jean shorts where you'd be like, he could, he should be able to golf in those. <laughs> that sounds like, I don't think I'd want to, I, I, it blows my mind when the guys be. here down here in the winter, a lot of the guys golf in denim. I can't think of a wow. fabric. I'd like to golf in less jeans. Than. Jeans. Yeah. You, you, you better, I don't, I, I don't think I've played with a guy golfing in jeans who isn't good at golf either. That's the you other. Know, maybe part. it's like, Either be all in. You're triggering me again. Like the, yeah. I, I'm interrupting because it's my point. Okay. Either be all in on the dress code, like that course that we're going to go to one day out in the UK where you can't even have pockets on your pants. And we're going to get special ass pants for this course because it's funny and it's just cool and you just do that. Yeah. Well, that's fine. Be all in. Like they could tell me it has to be like a certain kind of collar. We'll do it up. But you've just had these slobs all over these golf courses, total slobs. But yeah. like they're dumbass visors forward, so we're all good. And like you look good and your hat's backwards because like the wind's blowing, or like because who cares why? And they're giving you a hard time. It's just ridiculous. Hell yeah. Yeah, you can't argue. Right. All right. And it, no more apparel takes. So we're 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 powering through this round two. Uh I'm gonna tee up. Um I am out on special rules for bunkers we have to figure out especially when the rules changed of what a hazard was um and now it's a penalty area but the bunker is still a hazard and you can ground in a penalty area but you can't ground in a bunker um and there's different like um unplayable rules for bunkers i'm totally i've now come full circle you should be able to ground in a bunker. You should be able to test in a bunker and we should get rakes out of a bunker and the bunker should just go back to being a hazard. Not like me. when I play golf, when I hit a skinny skanky seven iron into a par three, I'm going catch a bunker, catch a bunch, catch a bunker. I'm begging to get in the bunker. Um, that wasn't the intention of bunkers. Um, and I think tobacco road, give them a shout out. This is the, probably the only course I played. They don't have any rakes in the bunkers. 
but they play all the bunkers through the green and you can test your surface. So when you hit into them, it's a little bit of anxiety. Did I get in a shoe print? Am I going to have to move this while no one's looking? How's that going to work? Um, but being able to test it, especially on the better end of players, that's the trade off. You that's the trade off. You can test it, but you can't. Mo- you're not like you, you're not. Mo- you, the yeah, they're not right now. In the morning, the ones that are around the bunkers, they do like a cleanup in the mornings. But for the if you're in like the random bunkers in the fairway mm-hmm. or the, the the native areas or throughout the day, yeah, and it's just like and it's a pretty good compact sand. So. Um, you can play out of it, but yeah, you might catch a really crappy lie, but you shouldn't have been in there to begin with. But it's just the, it's another rules complexity of golf, like the stroke and distance. Like we could simplify the shit out of this of like, don't go in the bunkers. It's not where you want to be, but if you are, yeah, fuck around, like test, test, like figure out how you're going to play the shot because it might be inconsistent in the bunker. And I think clubs would save a lot of money because of how much they're having to do to make bunkers. Perfect. Um, that's just uh that's where i'm at cool. preach goldie okay. man that's that's chicken soup for the soul i love every <laughs> everything that you just said i co-sign hell Let's go, yeah. well i would say in the the you, spirit I, of being able to test the sand is cool yeah i think the spirit of the debate is we're avoiding really just another rules complexity for spe- everything special ob special penalty area right. special a bunker is special a, a sprinkler head is special like let's just it's just an area where we can normalize it but i do think that would be the concession like let's get less perfect predictable bunkers mm-hmm. but just treat them as a um through the green like they're just another Sick. part of the course yeah, lovely. I mean, I can ground in a damn penalty area to test the surface now, but like the boy, it just doesn't make any sense. All right, Adam, um, what you got? This is an easy one. I guarantee you, ninety nine percent of golfers agree. You should be able to get a free drop out of a divot. In a, you are in the fairway. Uh, your ball lands in a divot. It's a free drop. It's as easy as that. Okay. So specific to it's a divot. It's ridiculous that we're even talking about it. Yeah, I didn't even put it on my list because it's so ridiculous. It's I'm I can't even believe you brought it up, Adam. It's that ridiculous. I'm gonna kick it over to you, Aaron. Just to talk about that more? No. Um <laughs> you hit a great shot, you do exactly what you're supposed to do. And Someone didn't repair their divot properly and you're in it. And so now you have to deal with it. You know what? Make zero sense. I'm wrong because I, you know, I said 99% of people would agree, but actually I think there's more that disagree. There's, there's so many hardos that are like, oh, it's just rub of the green man, play it as it lies. Yeah. And meanwhile, they'll bend like every, you know, I, I get it. I hate slippery. They can't slope. hit it where they're trying to hit it. Well, that too. But I, I think there is a, contingency of golf that is like the play it down at all times at all costs and it's fun to get a mud ball and you go ob and you shoot because you shouldn't care about your score and i think like there's some spirit to the spirit of the game that there is randomness and adversity and how you respond to it but also we've a limit again the modern game has a limit you put your ball in hand for far less frivolous reasons now than you getting screwed by somebody no. not upkeeping a fairway. I think the spirit of that rule matches with match play. Like that's fine. Like something crazy can happen and it penalizes you in that moment for one second and then you're done with it. But right in stroke play, it just it's, it, it's too arbitrary. Yeah. But in, from a match play concept, which is how golf was invented, obviously like, sure. Play everything down, you know, yeah, conditions. Just, just, I don't know. What Everything's like equal at that, at that point. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, it didn't make my top three cause I'm just over arguing about it. Cause it does, I get it. It's a fairly, I mean, I'm just trying to think now it'll happen 10 times this year. I don't hit it into, into divots that commonly, it really never happens. but, um, and you just move it. That's another thing about this rule that drives me nuts is like, I played in GSGA qualifiers where they can't have the fairway conditions up to par and they're still playing like move it in the fairways in like a real legitimate event. And I know that drives people crazy, but you're trying to make it as equitable as possible. And if the 
condition of the fairway is that random. You have to do something, let alone just the divot piece of it. Um, yeah. So, okay. Uh, any more takes on divots in the fairway? No. I'm um, good. All right. So we are at number on number three. All right. The, the, the last rule you would change, Aaron. Um, a rule I'm, uh, I haven't fell victim to this rule yet, but I'm infuriated about it ahead of time. Not only are there no carts allowed at Aaron Hills, there are no push carts allowed at Aaron Hills. <laughs> you have to carry your bag at Aaron Hills or they'll graciously let you pay a thousand dollars for a shitty caddy. <laughs> so I know it's not a thousand dollars, but what are we talking about? They're, they're like, I respect it. Uh, the worst rule ever in a long time. We're headed out there in about a month, and I'm I'm not I'm actually not looking forward to it. <laughs> I'm so, really annoyed by this. Um Aaron Hill. So yeah, this is we had to drop the news to Aaron while we were finalizing plans. We were very excited about kickstarting our Wisconsin trip at Aaron Hills. We knew it was walking only. We're gonna be at Sand Valley. That's walking only. It's we're fine. trying to get our, our old bodies ready for this, but there was one little tip that we had to tell him that uh uh, it's not only walking only push carts are prohibited. So there is, it is old school lug your bag. Have you ever heard of this before? Like what is the I, ground? Like just quicksand? <laughs> what have we been talking about? Is oh, it like okay. they think people are going to hurt themselves? Like it's too topsy turvy. Like what? It, maybe it's, it's to, such maybe a scam, dude. It's just promote, a scam. Maybe it's to promote, uh, it is a scam. of the caddies. I don't. It, it's 100% a caddy scam. I sniffed it out immediately. <laughs> so I've been training. Not only have I bought the lightest carry bag that the market offers, I've been doing hella shoulder reps. I got some new equipment. I'm ready. I'm going to be I, carrying. Before we went to Bandon the first time, I literally uh, <laughs> walked around my neighborhood with my golf bag on. Um, yeah, you did. Because we were <laughs> playing 36 holes four days in a row. And even though I used the caddy for like five of the eight rounds, I still thought that was a right. good idea. This one, um, yeah, I don't know. It is, it's unique and it's hilarious. So I'm glad you thought to bring that up. It's yeah. more of a localized rule, but a rule nonetheless. It's a local golf rule. Never the Highly okay. prestigious course. And, That's yeah. amazing. You All right, Adam. Ask about it when we go. Well, maybe we'll send them a clip. Answer is. Yeah, we just can't have the wheels of the push cart damaging the pristine yeah. property. Yeah. Um, all right, Adam, over to you. Yeah, so the 14 club rule. So my hmm. rule change is, is if you carry your bag, you get unlimited clubs. However <laughs> many you want. Okay. If you're carrying oh. your bag. Okay, Whoa. with a caddy? No, if you're carrying your bag. As many yeah, clubs okay. as you want. This isn't a, ba a classic Adam bait and switch where you're about to really change the topic on me. No, this is serious. But but really, though, 14 clubs, like where does 14 clubs even come from? I mean, why mm. not 15? Why not 18? Why not 10? I don't well, know. I just, just... So you think 14 is arbitrary? I'm I'm yeah. glad you're questioning things. Yeah, I'm Aaron. Aaron's always struggled because he doesn't know which wedge he wants to play. So he will commonly have 17 clubs because he has a 58, 60, 62, 64 degree, and maybe a backup Listen, 60 variant. When and you're so back. good with every wedge, what wedge do you put away? Yeah, we did talk about that in uh, pre-plug life of – what about a model where you just had a like you gamed out a I, basically to pick your driver up to sixty degree? You have a club for every degree. You just dial it in, guys. Dream. I just, I just it's a dream. I just thought of it. You know, obviously the handicap system's terrible, but I just came up with a great idea. Okay. Okay. All right. If you're, let's say you're a we'll sub, be the judge sub, sub. Let's say you're a sub five handicap. You can only have ten clubs. If you're between a five and a 15, you can have 15 clubs. Okay. I'm trying to even the playing field. That's how, that's how, that's how we even the playing field right there. Okay. Um, I think so. There's a little bit of intrigue there. I, I do think 
the idea of less clubs is kind of interesting where you just have to hit more creative shots as opposed to stock shots. Um, I, it's never going to change, but it's uh yeah, I don't know. Good, 14 good feels number. like a good number. You think it's so? Pretty good number. My back. I, I mean, sometimes I I'm like, I really have a hard time thinking if, I mean, if I had to get rid of one, it's probably going to be one of the long irons, but you're like, yeah, I might be compromising a shot coming up here. 14 too many. I'm pretty, yeah, 12, Adam, I'm pretty 12. sure you, you, you played with like 12 clubs for like four years. It drove me nuts. Yeah. The yeah. Ones you're like, you know, I got my five iron in my driver. I just got to fix that gap. And my four iron was in the bottom of Crystal Lake. I, <laughs> Tune into sure. our, uh, Maybe if they made more adjustable. Right? If you can adjust the clubs though, would that be permitted? So technically by the rules of golf, you can't adjust a club loft or lie in the round of golf, but if they could address that as a bonus mm -hmm. potential rule augmentation, and you had the technology to where you could like, think if you just had an iron and I know that it, they, it exists, but like actual functional high end, like good iron that you could just be like, yeah, I'm going to, it's a seven iron. Yeah. It's a three iron. Just one club. It talk about I can just add loft with my hands. I can yeah. take loft off with my hips. Tiger. Like yeah. yeah. I just use my well, hands. If, if yeah. Aaron asks the Aaron Hills folks like why there's no push carts, I really hope they're like, well, you can just only take like nine clubs. <laughs> yeah. God, yeah, I really mean. hope they respond with that. Just take less clubs. And then I can use a put well, I'll use a push cart if I can play with nine clubs. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of it's got a deal. Should be easier on the, the ground with less clubs. It's a weight issue, huh? Mm -hmm. But you're allowed to just let plop your bag all over the course right on the green it was it's putting an it on the environment <laughs> issue mm. like, all right let me round this thing out this is one near and dear to my heart we have to finally actually ban anchoring of the putter this is all oh. forms of anchoring not just the throat the throw putter needs to go we can cap the length of the putter i get it there's going to be a unicorn seven foot three golfer okay apply for some uh, medical exception, but cap the length of the putter. There is no anchoring, no broom sticking, no, uh, forearm anchoring, sidearm anchoring. It's got to go. And it's made a lot of people, a lot of money who can't fucking putt. And it drives me insane. Yeah. Um, yeah. before you come out with the, well, if it works, then why doesn't everyone do it? That's not what this does. This takes people who can't putt that have a yip in either one of their hands, or they just are never going to be above average putter. And it allows them to attain being an average putter. Are, um, are we talking some, pros? Oh, we're talking everybody. But my, my gripe is probably more so with the professional game. Now I've seen it with some people that are amateurs locally that, uh, are good players and, aren't good putters and they've gone to some of those band-aids for a year or two. But I, I think really it's more of this is one more geared to professionals. It's aesthetic. First of all, it's aesthetically gross. Um, and it's just, again, we're de-skilling the game enough. Like you got to use two hands and you got to figure out how to putt. You got to figure out how to get those nerves out. And, um, you know, everyone go into these, 42 inch up the forearm lock it. So I don't have to use my hands at all. And I could be as tense as I want. And I can do this. I hate it. It's got to go. Yeah. It's the people that aren't athletes, you know, um, <laughs> the is. non golf is too easy. The non, the non athlete crowd. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't know why we can't like we ban. Yeah. Pop, pop G has no hands. Totally. Probably has the yips in both hands and he doesn't use an anchor putter. And he's got yeah, bad He respects life. the game. Yeah, I, I will just say if you have it is off. It's so. totally odd. It's the only thing, right? It's it's the only swing that you are you. Could you technically anchor a seven iron? I know that'd be super weird, but could you? Can you? I don't think wedges for chipping. I mean, you could do some stuff like Matt Fitt. Patrick does like left hand low and it kind of like locks the club a little bit with his wrist, yeah, but it's not anchoring because so you have to hinge. So you can't like, you, you know what yeah. I mean? You it's, uh, yeah. it's just really yeah, a hinge. putting, putting thing. Um, 
Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I, uh, you know, I, we got to. Yeah, and we, that's we could. There's a lot more on the greens on that front, but we can at least start with banning the uh, the anchoring of the butter. Oh yeah, dude. All right, guys. Any uh, second take so we can recap it here, Aaron? We uh, well, me, Aaron, and or let me just say this: all three of us, kind of right out of the gates, we took on hazard rules, OB collectively. Uh, second one. Aaron went with the backwards hat and then he just went directly at Aaron Hills with this outrageous rule. Uh, no pull carts allowed and walking only. So um, that we did not like that. Uh, Adam went classic divot in a fairway. Good luck with uh, put the pushback you're going to get on that one. And then kind of a hybrid here. You went with, if you're carrying your own clubs, you should be able to have unlimited clubs and also suggested the amount of clubs should be based on your handicap. So uh, dive into that topic. And I uh, rounded out with uh, getting rid of the special rules for bunkers and we got to get rid of anchoring of all putters. So with that being said, guys, the rules of golf can use some amendments. That is our proposals. As always, stay plugged. Comment, like, subscribe. (laughs) Jewel.